Many false teachers, particularly of the social justice gospel, have a problem with the Apostle Paul because he wrote some things they do not like or agree with. Anti-Paulism is a heresy that denies the God-breathed words of Paul's epistles in the New Testament or asserts that Paul's writings in the New Testament are less authoritative than the red letters of Jesus in the Gospels. The purpose of this heresy is that if you discredit the Pauline epistles, you can rewrite Christian theology in your own image. This is what false teachers like Jory Mika or John Pavlovitz do on a frequent basis to justify their beliefs. Now this heresy is an especially dumb one. There is not historical legitimacy for the argument that the Pauline epistles should never have been made canon. At most, the book of Jude could be called into question, or perhaps Hebrews for its unknown authorship. But the Pauline epistles are historically unchallenged. Moreover, scripture shuts down this heresy early. 2 Peter 3, 14-18 reads, Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, spotless and blameless, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him, wrote to you. Also, in all his letters, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which the untaught and unstable distort as they do the rest of the scriptures, to their own destruction. You, therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard, so that you are not carried away by the error of unprincipled men, and fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. In this passage, we see Peter endorse Paul. We see that Peter acknowledges that Paul has written letters and elevates these letters to the status of the rest of scriptures in verse 16. Given how highly the scriptures are viewed by Peter, for Peter to elevate Paul's writings is an acknowledgement that definitively solidifies their status in the canon. Thus, because Paul's writings are scripture, false teachers attempt to distort them. If we are to reject Paul's epistles, we must now also reject Peter's epistles as well. We should then reject Luke, who is most closely linked to Paul, and Mark, who is most closely connected to Peter. This would leave the New Testament with nine books if we accept that Paul did not write Hebrews. The heresy of anti-Paulism is an affront to the authority of all scripture. John chapter 1 refers to Jesus as the Word. Teaching what is written in scripture we can affirmatively attribute to Jesus himself. Lastly, it is supremely illogical to believe in Christianity and reject the authority of the Pauline epistles as you would believe in a God that is not worth believing in. In conclusion, all Christians affirm the inerrancy and authority of scripture and 2 Peter 3 affirms the scripture status of Paul's epistles thereby preemptively debunking the heresy of anti-Paulism.